Pass and come back to you guys live here. Uh, NASCAR Heat 5 setup got part 2. Um, I'm excited. Let's, let's jump. Let's jump into it. You know, if you got any questions about the shocks, weight settings, or springs, make sure to let me know down in the comments section. We just uh, let go of the video of uh, basically the first part of the setup, and here we are for the second part of the setup. We'll go ahead and touch base on the tire settings. Um, Billy is in here with us again for uh, part two. Um, do you want me to start off for the tire settings, or do you want to start off for the tire settings? Um, I was thinking because this would pretty much be a pretty long discussion if we really went in depth with it. So I figured we'll do left front, right front, left rear, right rear, and then we'll pretty much talk about how they work in a, in all. You think that's good? That's good. So pretty much with the left front tire, um, because these these guys pretty much work opposite of each other. So left front tire, if you raise it, will uh, make you um, probably a little bit tighter. What I, I was thinking, if you if you raise your left front tire, because your right rear or your right side tires wear a lot more than your left, because the weight of the car going into a bank turn shifts to the right of your uh, car, so it wears the right tires out a whole lot more. So what I figured is you can run higher left front tire because it it'll tighten your car up for one if you do it, and for two you'll probably burn more tire, but then again you can afford to your right side tires are the ones that unless you had a road course are, are the ones that wear so i tend to run mine around 20 to 22 so i'm around there if i'm at a short track maybe under 20 if i'm at a bigger track maybe above 25 26 but i don't ever go higher than that for a left side tire because it will definitely make you tighter people don't think of it too much but your left side tire pressures if you make too big of adjustments on them will really mess up your car so you don't want to go crazy on it but um, for a super speedway you run them all at 60 because your tires don't wear but uh, for a short track you want the grip so you want them probably a little bit lower and then for a, a, a speedway you want them probably between 20 and 22 um, if, if you are ever getting loose though and you just can't find grip adjust your left side tire pressures um, if you make uh, if you make your left rear tire pressure higher it'll loosen it if you make it lower it should tighten it if you make your left front tire pressure higher it should tighten it and lower it probably won't loosen it it'll probably just stay pretty even because you got grip in that left front tire so because the left rear tires if you put tire or it the rear tires if you put tire pressure in it will create more wheel spin making your car pretty much looser um, your ref your uh, front tires won't do that so you can run them as high as you want and you won't get too much wheel spin because it's the rear axles that really make your car go so I don't want to confuse you guys but um, pretty much the front tires if you make them higher tighter pretty much and if you make them lower just it just gives you better grip rear tires if you run them higher it can make them looser lower it can tighten up your car a little bit but to give you a base um, I already gave you guys the base for the left side tires, but the right side tires are pretty much, I run them up at 60 for the right front, because I find speed in that, because the higher the tire pressure is the faster, and then the rear tire, if you run them up at like 58, it kind of counteracts if you ever do get loose, so you can run them at 60, like I do at Indy, um, but for a track like Auto Club or even, even Kansas, probably 58, uh, tire pressure i'm sure i missed a whole bunch there because there's so much to talk about in the tire pressures um you probably have something i missed so you wanna you wanna uh, jump into just, it yeah just just wanna just wanna touch on touch on a thing or two um you know obviously if you if you run your air pressure a lot lower you know you'll get you'll get better grip uh, but you'll you'll also create more heat in the tires you know, obviously, if you if you run your your tire your tire pressure is a lot higher, you may lose a little grip, but your off your your temperatures will actually come down just a little bit. You won't build as much air, uh, heat in the tire. So just kind of just kind of keep that in mind. You know, I've seen uh, I've seen tire pressures range from 40 to 60. You know, I've I've been all the way across the map. You know, when it comes to tire pressures. Uh, just something to add just a little bit to what uh, what Eagle said you know taking your your left front prep you know your left front air pressure 
you know, obviously if you run it a little bit higher, you'll be, you know, it, it, it'll help tighten the car up a little bit. You know, obviously if you run it lower, you know, it's going to be, uh, it may it may loosen you up just a little bit. You know, if you're a little bit tight on exit, you can actually, uh, you can actually drop that air pressure just a little bit, and it may free the car up just a little bit. You know, same thing with kind of like with the uh, with the right front. You know, the the higher the higher you the more air you put in the right front on a like a pit stop adjustment, it's going to free the car up a little bit uh, coming off the corner. Uh, obviously, if you lower it, it's gonna it's gonna tighten it up a little bit. And then kind of like with the left rear, you know, if you if you're uh, if you run it a little bit higher, you're going to be a little bit looser off the corners, uh, but it may uh, it may tighten you up just a little bit in the middle, just depending. Uh, obviously, if you run it lower, uh, if you need uh, if you need a little bit more speed, if you want to be a little bit quicker on a shorter run, say if you if you pit and you got like a couple laps to go and you want a little bit more speed or a little bit more loose, you can actually lower that left rear a little bit. Uh, it'll kind of start off a little loose with you. And then you know, as the as the run goes on, it'll it'll tighten the car up a little bit. And then the right rear, you know, uh, if, if you run it higher, uh, if you make an adjustment, run it a little bit higher, it'll tighten you up a little bit going in the corner. But you may lose a little speed coming off because it may uh, it may loosen you up a little bit too free on the exit. Uh, lower usually, you know, it's kind of like the left rear, you know, lower. You know, it, it'll it'll free the car up a little bit on the shorter run. You know, if you got a little bit of short run to run to the end of the checker, uh, you can you can actually drop that a little bit. And it'll it'll loosen you up just a little bit, but on the longer run, it'll it'll tighten up the car a little bit. But air pressures, you know, there's a lot of guys that just you know they're all over the map with air pressures. It's 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 depending on what you want to do. If you want a shorter run, if you want a short run speed for a, for a short race. You know, obviously you want higher pressures. If, you, if you're looking for a long run setup that uh, stays a little bit more consistent, then maybe you want to look at running your air pressures a little bit lower. Yeah, so I think we pretty much touched base on everything there is to touch base about tires. Um, there's a lot that really transmits into where you run it. Um, so a good base, short tracks, oval, super speedways, it all varies. Um, but. It depends on what you want, you know. If you if you want if you want short run speed, you know, well, fine shorter setups. races, you run uh, setups, higher stuff like that. Yep. Hey, run as much air pressure as you can. And one thing I wanted to add to that, if you know, you get on tracks where you have to really hug the bottom, say somewhere like Atlanta, somewhere like uh, uh, Auto Club or Michigan or or Vegas, especially Vegas. You know, if your car is turning a left a lot and you're, and you're kind of getting into the rumble strips, you can actually kind of raise your inside air pressure, your, your left front and your left rear, and it'll kind of keep the car a little bit more stable. It'll tighten you up a little bit to keep you from turning, you know, so sharp. So it's something to kind of keep in mind. You know, typically I run mine between 20 to 23. Uh, 20 being somewhere like Atlanta, 22, 23, somewhere being like Vegas. Because you really need to hug the bottom. So just kind of just kind of give you guys a little bit of tip on that. Yep, so I think we pretty much touched base and everything about the tires. Um, they don't do a whole lot. It just is really difficult to explain really what they do. So I hope that we gave you guys an idea. <laughs> but... With that being said, I think we'll go ahead and move on to the, the miscellaneous settings. There's a lot of stuff in here, but uh, this is some of my favorite stuff to mess with, especially when we get to the track bars. I have my own trick there. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start out at the cambers. This is pretty much where you get your tire wear. So if you show up at a track and you're wearing the crap out of your tires, what do you do? Tire pressure? That's the only thing I can think of. Well, no, the cambers is really what decides... Um, where you run your cambers or where you where you have your tire pressure or tire wear at but the higher uh, well first let's start out with left front camber is a positive camber right front is a negative camber and camber is basically how your tire sits so if you have them at zero they are pretty much flat on the ground and it gives you really good straightaway speed but then when you go into a turn for one your car is going to really bounce because your tires are straight on a banked eight uh, banked 
asphalt, you know, so that's, you're gonna, for one, wear off speed, two, wear your tires, and three, your car's gonna shake, and your shocks ain't gonna save you, <laughs> but, yeah, because it's bad when you're, when your tires are straight, and the asphalt's, like, curved, it's not good, so, yeah, and go ahead and try, you'll see what I'm talking about, but, Left front camber is always going to be positive and right front is always going to be negative unless we're at a road course. And we'll jump in for road courses in a minute. I don't want to confuse you guys. Um, the higher the camber, so, and when I say higher, I mean higher, positive, lower, negative. So higher meaning if you run your left front camber at like 3 and you run your uh, right front camber at negative 3, um, your left front camber is going to have pretty decent wear. But you're probably gonna bring your right front camber or your right front tire a little more. You ain't gonna bring your camber. <laughs> you're gonna bring your tire. I'm probably confusing you guys. Um, um when when you, you guys see the word degree next to the the camber stuff, that's it's the tilt of the tire on the axle. Um, so so something to add to that. So typically, what I do, I, I I mess with cameras a lot. To me, it's a, it's a fine tune. Uh, run in adjustment. And it, you know what, it, it can also uh, affect the rear too. So when I'm setting up a camera for a track, I typically look, if, if you look at the tire settings when you're, when you're out there racing, you have an inside, a middle, and an outside. So typically what I do is, is, is say if I just set a default camera in, say I set 3.0, on the left front and minus two and a half on the right front. So basically what I'm doing is is, is you create you create friction and heat on either side of inside of, or outside of the tire. So basically what I do is I shoot I shoot for about a fifteen degree difference to start off with. So if I'm running two fifty on the outside and two thirty five on the inside and 260 on the in the middle of the tire and what I'll do is, is is I'll tone that camber down just a little bit put more tire put more patch of the tire on the track so basically what I try to do is try to shoot for an even temperature all the way across and you can do that with with camber and you can also do that with air pressure so I typically try to have uh, when I when I really fine-tune the camber, it's about a 10 degree difference between outside and inside, and then once I achieve that, then I'll try to achieve the middle center of the tire with air pressure. So it kind of gives you a gist on how how you can adjust your cambers. Um, typically, if you've got more camber in the left front, you'll get better turn in, but you may get just a little bit looser off the corner if you've got too much left front camber. Right front camber obviously helps you in the corner too. It helps that car when it rotates. It helps the car plant to the ground. And it also, it'll also unload the tire to the left rear when you come off the corner. So uh, typically if you run a higher right front camber, it's obviously going to burn the tire up a little bit more. Uh, if, you, if you run less right front camber, you'll get, you know, obviously less right front tire wear. So kind of give you a gist on uh, on how the camera works yeah and like I, um what i was saying was like with the left front camber you want to run it higher than your right front because your lefts don't wear as high as your right so and this is pretty much just going to help your front tires your rear you got to kind of base that off of uh, tire pressure um but your left front camber you want to run it higher on your lefts because your lefts don't wear as much you can afford to do that and not have to worry about blowing a tire right front camber I tend to run around negative 2.5 negative 2 sometimes even negative 3 for you know it, for a track that doesn't burn tire if you go to a track that burns tire you probably like Atlanta you especially Atlanta you probably want to run it at like negative 1.5 or I've even gone as far as negative 7 negative 0.7 so and, and it does help with speed the higher you have your cambers the better turn in you're gonna have but you are gonna wear your tires more so if you're if you're five laps short like if you're blowing your tire with five laps left on your fuel I'm guessing it'll be the right front camber if you're burning the left front camber there's a problem but uh, if you're burning your uh, right front tire um, go down on that camber 
or go down on your tire pressure, but the camber is really what makes the adjustment. Um, tire pressure is just kind of there just to make tweaks on your camber. But um, you, if you run your camber lower, or if you're burning your tire, you want to run it lower. So if you're five laps short, you want to lower it a lot or lower your tire pressure. If you're right on the money, like if you're blowing your tire with zero laps of fuel, and you're comfortable with it then you can leave it if you're not comfortable with it go down a click or two but then again if you have 20 percent left on your tires and you're running out of gas you can afford to go up on your front camber and it will give you better speed so what you want to do is basically what i said if you're you just base it off of what your tire wear is doing and obviously you guys can see the basic has your left front camber lower than your right front camber you never want to do that because your left front is the one that doesn't burn so you can afford to run it higher your right front is the one that burns so you want to run it a little bit lower so sometimes what I'll do is I'll even run my left front camber all the way up at 3.5 4 even um, for qualifying you can run it up at 5 6 7 or 8 but um, for, for your right front camber you want to run it probably around um, negative 2 to uh, negative 2.5 so I think we pretty much touched base on the cambers. We spent probably more time than what I was planning to on the cambers. But um, with that being said, let's go ahead and move over to the sway bar. There's really not a whole lot to talk about on the sway bar. Um, pretty much, uh, Billy, he's, Billy said he likes to run his higher. Um, that, that gives you better long run speed. But we're going to start off with you even, which is where I run mine, is 1.5 OL. So... That's a pretty much good uh, basic even uh, front sway bar. The lower you run it, the snappier your car is going to be. There ain't no loose or tight on a sway bar. It's either snappy or it's shaking. So the lower you run your front sway bar, um, obviously the better rotation you're going to have, but you're going to really be snappy. So going into the turn, there ain't no saving it. If you're loose because you're a sway bar, you're wrecking basically. So that's why you kind of want, run, want to run it even. Um, you can run it lower, like 1.3, 1.4, but then you probably want to run your shocks lower to counteract that. But the shocks, like I said earlier, are small adjustments. It won't counteract a sway bar. One click on the sway bar up or down is a huge adjustment. It's like three clicks on a track bar. So it's sway bar is a huge adjustment, and that's why you don't touch it a whole lot. You kind of set it where you want to set it, and unless your car is really, really not handling you really don't want to touch it so um, that's basically what happens if you lower it if you raise it your car is going to shake going into the turn the car is for one not going to want to turn and two it's going to shake and that is where you adjust your shocks if you go check out my indianapolis setup i'm running a 1.8 i think sway bar or 2.0 one of the two and my shocks are all the way up at like 16 18 I don't do that at like any track except for like Indianapolis or maybe some other track. I just don't find success with it. Billy is really good with that though. I know he finds a lot of success with it. So uh, Billy, if you want to touch on anything I, I missed, I mean there's not a whole lot to really talk about on the sway bar. The lower, the snappier, the higher, the tighter, and shakier pretty much. Yeah, that's, that pretty much covers it, man. I, I just use the front sway bar as, as I build my, a lot of my setups around my front sway bar. I just want... To me, what I found is that the, you know, if I run a real high sway bar, obviously I have to run higher shocks. Uh, you have to run higher, higher uh, track bars, uh, springs, because that, that front of the car is going to be really, really stiff. So uh, usually I, I, I run mine between a 1.7 and a 2.0. I, I run mine. Some tracks I've, I've tried high high track uh, uh, front sway bar, like say somewhere like uh, Las Vegas. I tried a high sway bar and I just couldn't get the car to, to, uh, to rotate because of the bumps were so high. But somewhere like uh, Michigan, uh, I've, I've had good success with uh, high sway bars at Atlanta. Um, but it's more. Uh, it's it's what I found is it's, it's it creates a lot better long run stability. Um, it does there's definitely. A, there, there's there's a lot of you have to really change a lot of things in your setup to run high sway bars. So yeah, um, high high track bars, high rear springs, high shocks, lower wedge. There's 
yeah, there's a lot you gotta do. So that's why I don't really mess with it because it can really screw up your car um, if you really mess it up the wrong way. But if you do it right, you can you can find success with it. Only for certain tracks, though. If you go to a track that's bumpy, don't even try it. Yeah, if you go to a track hard. that's it's even it's like twice as hard. Like go to Vegas, you ain't never gonna get it to work. I don't think, but no, no it's, it's, it, it just don't rotate. It nope, it don't rotate. But um, I think we pretty much covered the sway bar. Um, yep. we'll go ahead and we'll jump into the track bars. The track bars pretty much they, they work together. The left track bar controls the front of your car. The right track bar controls the rear of your car. So, and and the higher the track bars, the looser, the lower, the tighter. If you run them really low, they'll even shake a little bit like your sway bar would. Or your shocks if you run them too low. Um, so what I like to do is I run mine higher. And, th and this is where you guys are, you guys are probably wondering, well, how are you running 53 front weight? How are you running 53 wedge? This is how. I run my rear springs higher and my track bars, especially the track bars, you run those higher. You want those at least 14, but I even run mine all the way up to 15. What I used to do is I don't go any lower than 15. Both of them are at 15, and if I get a little loose, I'll go down a click or two on the right track bar. That's it. What I do nowadays is the left track bar is going to be at like 14, and the right track bar is going to be at 15. And just like I said earlier, or I guess in the uh, part one guide, um, you want your front of the car to be tight, the rear of the car to be loose, and if the rear of the car steps out on you, the front of the car will catch it. The front of your car will uh, catch the rear of your car when it goes to step out, which is why you're able to run your springs and track bar so so high. Um, so a, a good base is no lower, I wouldn't think. You can run them lower, but I don't, um, than, than 13. I like to run mine at least around 14, though, and, and even all the way up to 15. Um, so I think that, that that pretty much does it for track bars. I'm sure there's something Billy would like to add for those. Um, you can run them lower, but you gotta adjust the shocks and just I don't I don't like to run them lower. I think it messes up your car. But but see what Billy has yeah. to say about it. Yeah, I mean you pretty much. I mean yeah, you pretty much covered it. I mean raising. I mean if you obviously if you raise both of them at the same time evenly, it's gonna it's gonna loosen up the car. You know if you lower them. Uh, if you lower them, it's, it's going to tighten up the car. Um, it's a big discussion for me, but I ain't going to. We ain't got enough time to go into it for here. I mean, Eagles pretty much covered the basics, so I think we're good there. Yeah, pretty much. If you guys want to know a base, well, you want to know what? I'll give you guys a base here. Second, we're done explaining all of this. I'll put in a base setup for Kansas. I'll go out and run a few laps. And uh, that, 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 that's going to be a base that you can run pretty much anywhere. So just to give you guys an idea, so we're not just throwing this all at you, and now you don't know where to start on your setup, I'll give you a good base to start at. And then with, with what we are telling you, um, you can uh, adjust from that base however you like. So just so, I don't want to throw this all at you, and then you don't even know where to start, which is probably what's happening. So... With that being said, Billy, do you want to go ahead and jump into the brake bias and uh, the grill tape? There's not really a whole lot to talk about for those. We're getting into the, the little stuff. Yep. Uh, brake bias, you know, obviously if you got more front, uh, more front bias, it'll be a little bit tighter under the braking. It won't break loose as much. And, you know, if you, if you, if you lower it, obviously it's going to turn a lot. I mean, it's going to, it's going to break a lot quicker and it's probably, probably going to get a little bit looser. Uh, Take somewhere like uh, Martinsville. I run a low, uh, like a real low uh, brake bias because I want that car to turn a little bit going in the corner. I wanted to get a little bit loose uh, going in the corner, but it's mainly your preference. You know, like road courses and stuff like that. I might run it just a little bit lower because I want to be able to run a little bit harder to the corner, and I want that car to kind of snap a little bit, uh, you know, to make the corner. So it's more like a fine tuning adjustment as well. It's more for uh, like going into pits too. You know, obviously if you got a lower brake bias, you know it's 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 uh, the car might be a little bit more snappy. Uh, may tend to uh, spin out a little bit maybe uh, if you got it too low. Typically I run mine around 70 to 80, almost everywhere I go, because uh, I want to be able to get in the pits good, and I also you know I don't want it to to snap snap on me real hard. You know, somewhere like a you know, like road course or something like that, but uh, but that's something else you can just play around with. 
Yep. Um, so I think we pretty much touched there on the brake bias. Pretty much just the higher the brake bias, the tighter it's going to be when you go to brake. The lower, the looser it's going to be. And you can really actually gain a lot of speed just by going down on it. For a track like Martin's Bowl, if you're braking and the car don't want to brake, guess what? You got you got to brake earlier and then you got guys running into the back of you. You lower that, you'll be able to brake at a much later braking point and that's tenths you're gaining. So... And that's only for a short track and a road course. A track like Kansas, you just want it to where you're not wrecking coming to the pits, pretty much. So, yep. so kind of grill tape. Grill uh, tape. You know, obviously, if you put more grill tape on it, you're going to have more downforce. So it's probably might might loosen the car just a little bit, and uh, just the less you're going to have less downforce, it'll probably tighten up the car a little bit. So it's not a it's not a whole lot uh, it's not a whole lot there. You know, obviously, if you put too much tape on it. So uh, that's more like a fine-tuning adjustment as well. So it's not no how to me it doesn't have that much effect on our car. Uh, maybe it doesn't. Ways, it's maybe just like your ride ways, heights. But, just but, just like your ride heights, you you make a small adjustment on it, you gain small amount of time. So the higher the grill tape, the faster, the lower, the the slower you're gonna be the higher it'll probably make you a little bit tighter because your engine's going to be hotter the lower the freer your car is going to be but then again if you run it too high your engine's not going to be getting air and you're going to be overheating so um a, a great spot actually for your grill tape to, if you have your gears at basic or close to basic would be 45 percent so um that's pretty much it for the grill tape billy you are very good when it comes to wheel lock and steering offset um he just left the chat. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and I know he's very good with the wheel lock and the stirring offset. Um, so, pretty much the wheel lock just, um, oops, made an adjustment there. The higher the wheel lock, the looser the car is going to be. Or, um, it, the higher the wheel lock, the more sensitive the car is going to be. The lower the wheel lock, the less sensitive the car is going to be so if you're on a wheel you can tend to run your a wheel lock higher um if you're on a controller you probably want to run it lower i know guys who will run it up to 20 and then i also know guys who will run it back down at like five and that's all it's all sensitivity um it's just it's it, it, it's really all it is just your sensitivity if you're going into the turn and the car don't react go up a few clicks on it um if you're rotating really well and the car goes into the turn and it's turning too much go down on it and that's, that's pretty much there is to talk about for uh for the wheel lock um the steering offset is actually great for guys on wheels you always run it at uh, zero on a road course um you run it you controller or wheel you want it at zero for a road course it gives you even turn for an oval if you're on controller 0.100 or 0.125 is probably good um for for a wheel i know guys who run at like 0.50 and it'll steering offset if you go higher on it it will turn right down the straightaway if you go lower on it it'll turn left down the straightaway and um for, for wheels, you can have your wheel turn to the right a little bit and then turn to the left going into the turn. It actually gives you a really good turn in for guys on wheels if you run it lower. Um, and then obviously you want it at zero for a road course. Um, Billy is back in here with us. You want to go ahead and touch on the wheel lock and uh, steering offset? I know you are very good on both of these. Uh, yeah, I mean, you pretty much uh, I mean, you pretty much covered it all. It's just wheel lock and sensitivity in the, in the turning and uh, all set. It just depends on how straight you want to go down the straightaway. <laughs> yep, pretty so, much. I know you pretty you, you go pretty crazy sometimes with the way you have your controller settings. I mean, sometimes he'll go up to 20 on his wheel lock, and I can't do that. I have, I have. I just like the car to be able to turn. I want it to react whenever I match the button. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Don't a lot of times don't use my my wheel lock my wheel lock settings. That's just for my preference. So. Yeah, it's all preference. Steering offset and wheel lock, it's all preference. You can gain to lose speed in it, but if you're losing speed, change it. You know, so it it running a zero wheel lock and running a thirty wheel lock is it has the exact same speed. It's all 
Do you want the car to react slow? Do you want it to react fast? And then again, steering offset does have a little bit of speed factor if you have it at like point fifty. If you're on a wheel, just turn your wheel to the right a little bit, and then you really don't have to turn it at all going into into the turn, and it, it'll turn. But then that causes uh, overcorrection, which is a big thing. So. If you make a big jump in your wheel lock, you may have to adjust your settings just a little bit, your setup just a little bit. You know, if you're running, like if I'm running a 20 wheel lock and I drop down to a 5 wheel lock, then I may have to adjust my settings just a little bit uh, as far as my setup just to get it to have the same the same turn in. So uh, it's, it's kind of, it's for preference. Uh, it's just how, how, how much you want the car to react, you know, whenever you you're turning the car, so it's, it's more so uh, that's pretty much going to do it for the miscellaneous settings. We spent a lot of time in the miscellaneous setting, settings, and uh, with that being said, final uh, home stretch here, the gears. Not a whole lot to talk about the gears. Pretty much the, the lower you have it, the less RPMs you'll be running, and the higher, the more RPMs you'll be running. Um, you can run three gears and use your fourth for a fuel saver. You can run four gears and use your third as a fuel saver. That's just all preference. Um, all, you know, you can, you, you can make your car run low RPMs and be just as fast and run, you know, the car will save all by itself by running a high run ratio. Or you can run a low run ratio and have a fuel saving gear. Um, you can run a two gear, a three gear, two gears for like short tracks so you don't have to go all the way up to the gears. That's just preference if you're annoyed by having to go through four gears at a short track. Or uh, you can you can run a three gear for a fuel saver or uh, really just not a whole lot to talk about on the gears. There's a lot of options, just there's they all do the same thing. Yeah, just get you a gear chart and just play around with gears. Typically, I run a lot of three gear sets. I do have a... Uh, I do have a couple tracks where I run a two gear. Uh, actually, two. I got one in Richmond where I run a two gear, and uh, I tried a two gear at uh, Martinsville, but I think you had a little bit more success than I did with a two gear there. So uh, it's, it's possible. So just experiment with it. Just remember the higher the rear end ratio, the more RPM. The lower the rear end ratio, the lower the RPM. So. Uh, yeah, just more like a fine-tuning adjustment as well because there's so many different combinations of gears that you can run so there's probably I don't know how many they are but there, there's a bunch so definitely it's just your preference or you can just leave them at the default the default gears I mean if you look at the rest of the setup the defaults pretty bad but the, yeah. the default gears they're they're not so horrible but like I promised I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a base setup and uh, that's pretty much going to do it. I'm going to go in here and adjust the setup. Uh, appreciate you doing this with me, Billy. And uh, hopefully we'll help some guys. Hopefully we'll, uh, you know, if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. And um, just... Uh, if there's any setups you guys need, just check out our channels, uh, High Side Broadcasting for uh, Eagles, or it's Billy Holcomb on uh, YouTube for me. So uh, I got a bunch of truck setups on there as well. So yep. uh, we'll be doing some Xfinity and uh, Cup, and uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Just let me know in the comment sections for either questions, or if um, you guys just give me ideas for videos. Do you want set up live setup builds where we start from scratch and build a setup? Do you want just a setup giveaway? Do you want podcast? Do you want more broadcast? Do you want more uh, videos on like the misfits? Like I'll go ahead and I'll post videos on on the league, you know, or you know, what do you guys want? You know, um, do you want? I've actually thought about giving out some NFL videos, um, just to attract some NFL fans. You know, we'll expand the variety of fans that we have more than just racing fans just to expand the channel a little bit um just uh really doesn't matter to me as long as i'm capable of doing it i, I can do it for you guys and i'm sure billy will help out a little bit and um appreciate everybody who's tuning in i'm building this setup right now for you guys a base setup here um but uh hopefully this helps you guys hopefully you guys enjoyed it um and if you guys need to skip through the video anywhere, I did the topic we were talking about had highlighted. So if we're talking about the the, the tire pressures, I had 
you know, so all you gotta do is scroll through the video and see where it was highlighted, but, um, there's the base setup right there, guys. Let's go out and run some laps. Well, let me go ahead and adjust this brake bias. And, um, yeah, I'm on my wheel, so if I'm a little rusty, that's why. And, um, this is basically a setup giveaway for Kansas on top of the setup guide. Is there anything you want to add to any of that, Billy? No, I think you, uh, I think you covered it. You, you guys can get a, just a basic setup that uh, Eagle just put in, so maybe this will help you as well. So this is a good base for really any racetrack. Um, Kansas obviously running the outside line is a little different. You gotta, like I said, you can run lower shocks here. I'm actually not running as low of shocks as I probably should be. And look at that. Alrighty. That's what I'm talking about right there. Um, the uh, glitch, not so much a glitch, probably like a scene in there. Um, kind of catches your car and it'll just spin you right around. So, um, kind of got to watch out for that. And I'm um, just making some adjustments for a base setup here. And then you can go through the video and just, you know, if you're loose going off, loose coming in, you know, just, you know, scroll through the video and see what, what, what'll help you, you know, adjust what. Um, and this is for guys who, you know, want to learn how to build their own setups. There are guys out there who will just take setups and run with them. And then you got guys out there that actually want to learn, so props to you guys who actually want to learn I was at one point one of those guys that just wanted to take the setups and go with it and now um, now I'm helping you guys so Let's see if you can't get a good lap here Thirty point five forty eight's not bad for a setup that for for a base setup. I know I think my best here on the other account and or controller or on NASCAR Heat Four, whichever it was, was a thirty point two, but that was low fuel draft. So best at thirty point four full fuel. It's not a bad lap for it. Yeah. And there you guys see my template came on, so just adjust that tape a little bit, or adjust, um, adjust the, uh, the gears a little bit. So right there's a base setup, uh, mid 30.5, like I said, it's a base, not a full out setup, and, um, right there you guys have it, just go in there and adjust off of that, that, that works for just about any oval, you might struggle a little bit at, like, Auto Club, or, but, but for Vegas, Atlanta, um, Texas, this is not a bad, uh, bad setup here, so, appreciate all you guys that tuned in and watched, and, uh, make sure to, uh, check out the part one video, and, um, that, that's pretty much gonna do it, hopefully this helped, and, uh, peace out, guys.